here in this video i'm going to show you the lick you just heard but i'm also going to show you how you can practice to get your ultimate picking technique up to that level so you can actually learn licks like these much quicker but also come up with them by yourself so i didn't learn to pick like this by focusing on a lot of licks Yes, it was part of it as well, but I did a lot of different exercises to get my ultimate picking technique up to whatever level I'm at now. So later on in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of exercises that can really help your ultimate picking when it comes to runs like these. And you can obviously apply the same type of concept to other patterns as well. But first off, let's just go through the lick here. It's in C minor, so C Aeolian. As usual, you have the tabs available on my Patreon, you have the link in the description. And also, if you want to get Guitar Pro so you can play along with it, you can get that at 10% off by using the link in the description as well. So, we start here on the 18th fret of the high E string. I'm going to go down in these descending sixes. Then we're going to go down to the next string group. So the initial thing here is just three different uh, descending sixes. So one, two, three. Then we're going to repeat that in the next octave. So we're going to start here. So it's exactly the same notes. Again, three, uh, three descending sixes. One, two, three. Then we're back at the starting note here to B flat. So. And then we're gonna do one group of six because we run out of strings. Then we're gonna shift down to root note here. After that, Paul Gilbert is gonna take over. We're gonna go up in the Paul Gilbert sequence. And I call it that because it's basically one of the first uh, licks or sequences he shows in his first instructional video, Intense Rock. And I think listening to good examples of whatever technique you're trying to learn is super important and can be a bit neglected. At least that's what I've been seeing with some of my students. They want to develop a certain technique, but they haven't really listened to the, the best performers using that technique. And I think that's really important. So you, you have a really clear idea of what to shoot for and what it should sound like. Uh, it's kind of not much different than if you want to learn to play blues, you need to listen to blues. Otherwise, how would you ever know if you're doing it correctly? And if you dig a bit deeper here, that's more the macro level when you do a style. The micro level would be a specific technique. So if, whether you want to learn to play slide, get a good legato, hybrid picking, whatever it might be, you need to listen to good examples of that technique to really be able to develop it for yourself. Otherwise, you're kind of fumbling around in the dark. So go listen to good picking. And I think uh, Vinnie Moore's instructional videos and as well as Paul Gilbert's first two videos at least are really good examples of, you know, kind of the higher levels of this uh, ultimate picking technique in the context of this uh, rock metal shred guitar type stuff. So I'm going to go up with the Paul Gilbert sequence, like I said, and that's basically as ascending sixes. But every time you change string, you're gonna move up a position. And the easiest way to think about this, so you don't lose your place, is that the fifth note in, the, in each group of six will be the new starting note of the next group of six. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the fifth note is here. It's gonna be our new starting point. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fifth note is here. Fifth note is here. And then for the last string group here, I'm going to restart in the same shape. Uh, and the reason for that is because I want to lead up to the root note here and be on the beat. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and when I land here, I bend up to it from a uh, half step below. And the reason why I do that is because I want to uh, get the vibrato to be able to go below the pitch as well. So if this is the pitch and this is the vibrato, if you just vibrato on the note as it is, you can only go up, right? Uh, but if you bend into the note, you have some leeway to go a slight bit below as well. And it just sounds like a more natural vibrato to my ears, but you can do it however you like. 
So, uh, if we put everything together again. All right, so I told you in the beginning that I was gonna show you how to practice this, because like I said, I didn't really build my technique by learning specific licks. Uh, it was more working on the smaller building blocks of these licks. Uh, and then once you have those down, it's way easier to, to learn any type of lick from another player or coming up with your own, because your technique is basically gonna be 80 to 90% there, so it's gonna take you way less time to get it together. So I'm not gonna show all the sequences I've been working on. Uh, I actually working on a book for that, so that's gonna be coming out soon. Take a common pattern and then really work on that so you can get it down. So the next time you see it in any kind of context, you can you know pretty much play it already. So in this case then we have uh, descending sixes on one string group. Uh, and we also have uh, descending sixes going down in a sort of vertical position, like that. And then we have ascending sixes. And this is more of a vertical feel as well. So what I suggest that you do if you want to develop this is to do it in two ways. You want to do it with uh, what I call the mechanical approach where you look at specific set fingerings instead and don't care about the tonality. So let's say we do uh, descending sixes with that approach. I would just take a fingering like one, two, four and just go down like that, right? Uh, and then I would do that with one, three, four as well. And why those two? Well, those are the fingerings that will occur uh, most often in the scales. Uh, and a lot of people ask me like, well, if I do one, two, four, for example, and one, three, four, what about uh, the whole steps? Thing is though, whether you play whole steps with one, two, four, or one, three, four, once you can do one, two, four like this, if you stretch your fingers, won't be much of a difference in terms of the coordination between the uh, left and right hands. So don't worry about that. I mean, you could even go do stuff like that, right? Then it's going to be the same type of uh, coordination or tape, same type of feel, even though you're stretching way more. So doing it like this, one, two, four, and one, three, four, will set you up nicely to play pretty much any scale pattern later on. So try this as a practice routine. Uh, start with uh, one, two, four, and then you do that on each string group. So you're gonna start at the lowest possible fret, first fret, then we're gonna start with the E and A string here. Uh, if you're on a seven string, obviously you need to start on the B and E string or whatever you tune it to. And then just go up like this with the one, two, four. Whatever tempo you can do it perfectly. So perfect synchronization, no flams, no strings ringing or anything like that. Do it all the way up and then when you reach the top you go down. Then you do that with one, three, four. And then when you've done that you go to the next string group. One, two, four, up and down. One, three, four, up and down. And then you do that on all five string groups if you've got six string guitar. Then you worked on the horizontal aspect here, but now you also want to work on the vertical. So you do the same thing, one, two, four. So you're gonna start here and you go up. Restart on each string group. And then you descend every other fret. And so on, all the way up, all the way down, and then one, three, four as well. And the mechanical part is really important because you can really focus on the actual technique. You don't have to worry about different fingerings. Uh, and, uh, but you want to be able to, to see the scale shapes as well. Otherwise, you'll end up having a really good technique, but sort of nowhere to go. You're going to start playing stuff like... Right, which, you know, can be cool, but... I'd rather do it within a scale, right? So the obvious solution here is to work on the scales. So you do the same thing, 
but you pick a key in this case. So you do, let's say you do E minor, just to keep it simple. You find the lowest available position for E minor without an open string. So that's gonna be here. And then I just go up. So these are my ascending sixes. Go all the way up and then you do the descending sixes from you know, the top here. Again, just keep it super accurate. Uh, do that on all string groups, and then you do the vertical sixes here as well. And when you do these, I would highly suggest that you do it with a timer. So you maybe do one or two minutes in each position, and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten available starting points if you do if you have 24 frets and you go up in one and down in the next. So you're connecting two uh, scale shapes. Then basically it's very easy math here. If you want to do 10 minutes, you do one minute, 20 minutes, you do two minutes and so on. Uh, and I think it's good to have a timer anyway, because then you can just focus on perfect technique and it's gonna take you whatever the time is gonna take you anyway, instead of having this like, oh, if I practice this faster, I'm gonna be done faster. Because that's kind of shooting yourself in the foot uh, when it comes to the technique, you really want to focus on complete accuracy here uh, when you do this sort of repetitive practice. So once you've done that, you can just play around for fun uh, and as your reward for being very diligent and really focusing on, on proper technique during your uh, repetitive practice. But I can't stress that enough how important that is to build that base. But then, you know, just have fun and push the speed, try different speed bursts and things like that, but also just pick a key and then move around in uh, the scales using whatever sequence you're working on. So in this case, it would be ascending and descending sixes. So I can do that in, in C minor, let's say. So it's not about speed here initially. It's more about being able to go around the scales uh, spontaneously without losing your place. And then eventually you can start speeding it up. So just come up with whatever you know you feel like in the moment, and then the next day you go through it again, you do the mechanical practice, and then you do the whatever key you're working on that day, uh, and then you know come up with different things again. And as you do this day by day, week by week, and yes, month by month, depending on where you're at, uh, you're gonna find that your technique just gets better and better and better. Uh, but it's never a, like a constant growth like this. It always goes up and then it feels like nothing is happening and then all of a sudden you jump up again. So you kind of need to be patient with this stuff because it is hard to do this. Uh, it takes time. So just get into it with that mindset and be patient. I'm not necessarily the most patient individual in the world. Uh, so I, I practice a lot instead because then everything seems to move faster, right? It sounds like a contradiction, but it's kind of not. Uh, and when you're building this technique initially, you need to spend more time on it than you perhaps like. But after you've built it, it takes way less time to maintain it. So don't worry about being out of balance in your practice for a while. Because if you really want to get this technique down, it will take you, I would say, you know, 90 minutes to two hours per day for three, four months at least to see real solid progress when it comes to alternate picking. I'm not saying this to scare you off doing it. I'm just saying it so you have a ballpark figure of how long roughly it takes to see a big difference in your picking technique. And of course, it won't be no progress for three months and then all of, us, all of a sudden you're just gonna pop up to a you know, much higher level. You're gonna have you know, wins and plateaus during the way. So just expect that and relax. And before you know it, 
three months have passed and you will be a much better player for it. <laughs> Day, I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the pentatonic picking power book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but we'll also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start.